Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason. I am at Cliff K Park, which is in South St. Louis County. This is a St. Louis County Park and is not too far from Oakville, but Cliff K Park got its name from a natural cave that is located here. Of course, I'll be showing you that and telling you more all about the cave and everything and its historical value and everything. There are three trails here. Um, one of them is actually paved and it's by Great Rivers Greenway and I'm going to be walking mostly on that and showing you some markers along the way. And there's two different parking lots so if there's more to see I'll go ahead and cut to the chase. Here we go. So from the north parking lot, I call it the north parking lot because well it doesn't really have an official name. But I'm going to go ahead and start at the Mississippi Greenway. And this is paved and it takes you to the overlook and here's a little map. The entire trail is 6.7 miles and I don't plan on doing all that today, but I'm just gonna go ahead and see what I can find. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start on up. Here we go. All right, so now we're at a fork in the road. I could go down a little ways or I can go to the Mississippi River overlook right ahead. I'm gonna go with a overlook. And by the way, these do connect to the dirt trails, the other two, I should say. And people can, people can actually bike on these, which is a little surprising to me, but somehow the there's really no bumps on those dirt ones. Oh man, looks great already. And this is the overlook. Very nice. I don't see a big historical marker here, but I see a couple things before I check out the overlook. Great River Highway. Since prehistoric times, the Mississippi River has been used to transport people and goods. The trade route or route along the river was a driving force for why people chose to live where other rivers and streams meet the Mississippi River. And then something about river ecology. Underwater plants in the river need some sunlight. The flowing river carries away sand, clay, and loose soil in the water that blocks sunlight. Okay, a little cool there. So, let's take a good look at this. Oh, yes. Mississippi River. And then, of course, is Illinois on the other side. And I know you can't really see it, but there is a trail down there. I don't plan on going down there today, although I may. Actually, you know what? Maybe I will because I see a parking lot and I see a shelter down there. So I'm definitely going to have to find a way to get down there. But, uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, this uh, has been kind of been blocked off by those trees. Just like it was in the bee tree video, which I put out recently. Still, I mean, it's a decent view for looking downward. More than 325 bird species rest along the Mississippi Flyway on their round trip flight each year to reach their summer breeding grounds in the north and winter homes in the south. And then on the back it says the Mississippi watershed, rainwater and melting snow from 31 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces flow through creeks, rivers, and streams and drain to the Mississippi River flowing to the Gulf of Mexico. You know, stuff that we don't really think about. All right, so going back to the trail, I'm just going to take the lower trail, see where it leads me, and then hopefully to the cave and to the other parking lot. Here we go. So as you're going down that trail, you'll also be going towards this bridge, or walking on this bridge. Man, I just can't believe how clean this is. I mean, there's like no graffiti, no nothing. I mean, this has definitely been well kept. I mean, anybody who just ruins this i mean they're definitely ruining it for the whole park this bridge by the way takes you over cliff cave road so here let me get it closer to the road um so this road takes you to the north parking lot where i was and that takes you to the south parking lot and to the lower overlook and the trails but i'm going to go ahead and see which way to go next so by the end of this bridge, 
there's going to be another fork in the road. If you want to experience more of nature or go by the dirt biking trails, then definitely go that way. It is 1.1 miles to Telegraph Road. Or we can also go this way, which takes you directly to the cave. Well, not directly, but I'll show you how to get there. And it can also take you to the lower trailhead or the south parking lot, as I call it. But I'm going to go ahead and go this way. So once you get closer to the cave or this bridge, there's the forming a cliff cave marker. Rainwater and melting snow are stronger than they seem. Caverns like Cliff Cave form when water soaks into cracks and pores, mixing with carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid. The acidic water finds its path through crevices, enlarging each passageway as it goes. It can take 100,000 years to create a cave large enough for a human to fit in. Fascinating stuff. This talks about the bat species. I'll explain more about that as I get closer towards the cave. So you cross this bridge, and there's a creek down below it. And it's very hard to see because of the trees and everything, but the cave is just right up that way. And I'll show you how to get, on, get to there because there is kind of a hidden passageway. Before I do that, let's take a look at this marker right here. All right, so the, Cl the Cliff Cave Wine Company in the mid-1800s, Cliff Cave was used by the Cliff Cave Wine Company as a wine cellar. Wine was kept cool by the ever-flowing spring. The wine company built the rock walls at the entrance of the cave. And that's just what it looked like back then. Let's see what it says on the other side. Spirit of Cliff Cave. During cold winter days, caves like this one occasionally breathe a cool mist into the open air. Some Native American people consider this to be the breath of a Wacon or Osage spirit. Interesting. So this is how you access the Cliff Cave. All right, so climb over this. And this is a trail that is very uneven. You'll be hearing me say this a lot. Be careful because, yeah, there are rocks, a lot of dirt, mud, no matter if it hasn't rained for days. But yeah, um, there's a lot of hills up and down here and there, some steep, some not. But I'm going to go ahead and lead you there, so here we go. And this, my friends, is the old Cliff Cave. And it's very refreshing because... Here, let me get out of the sunlight real quick. <laughs> now, as you get closer to the cave, you get a nice, cool air. It's like natural air conditioning. <laughs> because it is very hot outside today, so definitely uh, embrace this <laughs> as you get closer to the cave. And there's gonna be some tricky ways to get up there, so be, be very careful. And not surprisingly, this is a very popular place for families or for kids or teenagers to come hang out and play in the nice cool water. But if you do go here, I would definitely um, watch out because, yes, there are some slick areas. Pretty much where I'm standing. Especially on this uh, rocky path, you know what I mean? So as we get closer to the cave entrance, I just thought I'd show you this. Really cool waterfall, although you can tell it's a little bit man-made, but still. So you can use shoes or sandals or you can just take your shoes and socks off to cross this little pathway to get up to the other side where there's hills. And right now there is a nice pan shot of close up of the cave, which since 2009 has been gated, even though St. Louis County Parks Department does give tours every now and then. I don't know exactly when. You'd have to go to their website. And definitely be careful because yes, there are plenty of um, unstable places to walk on and some graffiti, even though a lot of it's faded. Well, I'll get into the history of this part in just a second, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a look of inside the cave. So, there's a sign in there. 
And by the way, this cave is like 57 degrees all year round, kind of like Merrimack Caverns and most caves. And this was also known as a Jesse James cave, although there is no evidence that the James gang has been here, but a lot of Missis I'm sorry, a lot of Missouri caves are nicknamed that for whatever reason. <laughs> But anywho, um, Cliff Cave, also known as Indian Cave, is developed in Mississippian, St. Louis, and Limestone. With 4,723 feet of cave passes, cave passes surveyed, it is the second longest cave in St. Louis County. Cliff Cave is a historical and archaeological site. In October 2009, the cave was gated to protect the delicate cave environment and the, the fragile biological diversity which inhabits Cliff Cave. And over here, is where water, I'm assuming from the Merrimack River, or from a spring rather. I mean, I know it's really hard to see, but I wish I had a flashlight to show you, but anyway, it flows down there. So as far as the animal species that are being protected in here, it is mostly bats. Now that is one reason why I don't want to go into this cave alone, especially alone. I mean, yeah, I mean, bats and caves, they go hand in hand, but I'm pretty much like Bruce Wayne, you know. <laughs> I have bat phobia. But a cave gate was installed here to preserve the endangered Indiana bat, which reside in the cave. As a joint effort between St. Louis County Department of Parks and many other organizations, including the Bat Conservation International, as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, this was pretty much put up here for that reason. And ever since the gate was installed, the population of the bats has um, reportedly increased. So I hope that's the case. All right, so now we're going to go into some history about this area. Going back to the age of Native Americans that reside here all over America before it was even a country. They were likely attracted to the area due to the cave, the fresh spring water, and the nearby Mississippi River, which is just up that way. In 1749, Jean-Baptiste Gamache first acquired the land through a land grant from the Spanish government. In the 1770s, the Cliff Cave was used by the French fur trappers and traders as a riverside tavern for travelers of the Mississippi River. So, I mean, it is kind of far from the Mississippi River, so I wonder what kind of helped guide them here. You know, just one of those curious questions. During the 1860s, which of course, um, half of it was the Civil War, the Confederate soldiers were thought to use the cave as a rendezvous point. But after the Civil War, though, the state of Missouri became pretty much a winemaking place all over, and this place was no exception. The company, the Cliff Cave Wine Company, was established, and they planted 25 acres of grapes in this area, which produced 3,000 gallons of wine in one year. I mean, he believed that. I mean, it was right here in this area, too. So there is stonework near the cave um, entrance that still exists today. And I imagine it's that right there. But I also thought maybe, uh, I'm looking at my notes right here, and there was also a tavern that was placed here. I'll go into that in just a second. But in the late 1800s, volunteer soldiers from Jefferson Barracks, which is not too far from here, they built a saloon at this entrance. By 1910, the cave was leased to Anheuser-Busch to store beer with the company harvesting ice from the river in the winter and keeping the beer cool during the summer. And as most um, local St. Louisans know, historians that is, they also use the Cherokee Caves underneath, you know, <laughs> Cherokee and Lem districts, so this was not the only cave that was used for that reason. And this obviously was before modern refrigeration. And sometime during the 20th century, there was also a tavern and a cafe here called Gurley's. And a pool of cold water and a mineral odor named Sun King Pool was sourced by a spring. But it is now in the location of a parking lot. Now I'm kind of curious which one. I'm, I'm assuming it's a south parking lot. Maybe we'll find a marker there. Now there has been some crime that has taken place in this park. But one of the most tragic, arguably the most tragic in my opinion. On July 23rd, 1993, six people were killed while exploring this cave due to a flash flood. Four counselors and 12 boys from the St. Joseph's Home for Boys, which was a residential treatment center for abused or troubled youth, were exploring the area. Seven were trapped in the cave when rain caused flash flooding. The bodies of four youths and two adult counselors were later found. But one boy survived and was found 18 hours after the flood with mild head trauma and hypothermia.
So now I'm gonna go. So now I'm gonna go uh, try and get back into the heat <laughs> as much as I don't want to because this cool air coming out of this cave. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely a refreshing feeling. And I gotta cross that creek again. So the trail leads to this parking lot, what I call the south parking lot, but what they call the lower parking lot. <laughs> it is lower. And there are some markers right here. I'm sure a lot of it is stuff I already explained. And by the way, I talked to a park ranger just now and he was putting up signs for an event that's going on tonight. And even though this park does close a half hour after dusk, um, there's um, something going on tonight. There's a stargazing event. It's family event. And I mean, today's Friday, so it would definitely be awesome to attend. But unfortunately, of course, I won't be here tonight. But point is, there may be some great events you could be missing out on. So definitely check the calendar on the website. So here is a little history of the area. This was put up by Great Rivers Greenway in the county parks. So this one talks about the Mississippi River and its formation. But I'm going to skip to the vineyard to swimming to pool to park. The land within now Cliff Cave Park has been used in a variety of ways since the late 1820s. The Cliff Cave Wine Company purchased the land in 1868 from property owners and made 3,000 gallons of wine per year before going out of business. The Sun Canyon swimming pool was located in a valley below the cave in the first half of the 20th century. Because the pool was fed by nearby springs, the water was extremely cold and smelled strongly of minerals. In 1977, St. Louis County opened Cliff Cave County Park. Twin Hollow Associates farms the nearby land and donated more than 300 acres of land to the park, which offers visitors the opportunity to experience bottomland sloughs and wetlands while walking or bicycling. Nearby Bus and Quarries Incorporated donated crushed rock to raise the parking area out of the floodplain so people can enjoy the fresh air and green space for more days every year. Very nice. This is what I was talking about right here. These flyers, so... So here's some more information about the cave and this was the picture that I showed you um, just a few minutes ago. This one talks about, again, the formation to the cave. And then Cliff Cave, again, stays at a consistent 57 degrees Fahrenheit year-round. And then the history of the wine company, the bats. Okay, so this cave has been called Indian Cave because Native Americans once used the cave for shelter and storage of food and goods. Chert rock tool fragments embedded in the clay floor at the entrance are evidence of Native Americans occupying the area prior to the 1600s. Osage people who lived in this area used the cave for centuries, using the front of the cave as shelter and deeper areas for ceremonies. Thanks to the high entrance ceilings and spacious dry floor, the cave would offer welcome refuge against harsh winter winds with fresh drinking water from the spring nearby. The cave is close enough to the river for fishing, working, and traveling, but not too close to, as to be flooded during the rainy season. All right. And this is the shelter. And then right here is just the park rules. And then this one just talks about the ecosystem, like all the native plants that are in this area. But there's a short looping trail. I'm gonna go ahead and check that out. And it looks like there's another overlook over there. I'm, I'm gonna do that first. And this is what I was talking about right here. There's no marker here, but this one kind of gives you a closer look at the river, despite that big tree being right there. I know nothing can be perfect. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's a really nice chill spot. See parts of Illinois. And another thing to note is at the shelter area and the parking lot, there is a really long walking trail if you have your walking shoes on and if you're ready to take a 4.5 mile hike or a walk or a jog or whatever. I mean, you can also ride a bicycle too, but there's also a loop that just takes you down to the bottoms and uh, explored more of nature, but unfortunately I'm not gonna do that today. But yeah, one of these days I'll definitely get around to it. But instead I'm going this way, check out some more nature. So from that parking lot, there is a neighboring half a mile loop trail that takes you a little bit closer. And if you ask me, this is a much better 
scenery of the Mississippi River and plus there's I'm walking on sand so <laughs> very much like being on a beach of course I'll say it again be careful because yeah people do slip and fall wow look at that now that my friend looks like a beach now I'm looking north and if you can see that far away um, I know the camera doesn't do it justice but that is Jefferson Barracks Bridge that's interstate or the 255 takes you into Illinois and then Missouri so yeah this is just plain awesome I highly encourage people to definitely check out this trail because it is also shaded too and I see a couple of people fishing down there and also in addition to the Jefferson Barracks Bridge now you can see a little bit of the St. Louis skyline where I'm pointing again the camera does not do it justice but right where that, tr that white truck is yes you can see the St. Louis arch I kid you not parts of the skyline it's just unreal <laughs> I don't even know how many miles I am from the arch, but I'll put it on the screen once I find out. And one more thing I gotta show you from this trail is, okay, that overlook that I was at earlier. Yeah, there it is right there. You can't really see it, but there's some graffiti that um, helps <laughs> take a look at it. But yeah, that concrete stuff you see on the bluff, yeah, that's where I was. So yes, I'm finally down where I want to be. All right, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason at Cliff Cave Park or Cliff Cave County Park. It goes by both names, but I hope I gave you guys good reason to come out here, enjoy some nature, and learn some local history that a lot of St. Louisans probably don't know. So definitely, people, you got to come out here and experience this for yourself because it's no miss, especially in a forgotten part of St. Louis County. So I am Jason, signing off.